and then I saw bald opal. I couldn't believe it. Any color you can see it in, so stable, so good. That's what triggered me in. When I went in 1996-97, we put the money, we got proper license from government, we got proper approval from uh, uh, Aboriginal people, all that in Australia, you got, then you can go mine. But how you going to mine if you got no machinery, no diesel, no money? That means this is cost too much. That's why Opal today is expensive. So you go there, you're prospecting, you peg your mind, this is like lottery. You go in casino, you put black or red, you win or lose. That's how it is. That's Opal is the same. But you need to learn to read the ground, to know when you dig, where you're digging, what are you doing. You need to know. You walk in through the area and then you find the rocks, special kind of rocks on the ground. And then dead rocks, you follow it. When you find the color in dead rocks, then you sit there and think what dead rocks come from, from that hill, that hill, or that hill. This is the most important. And then, sometimes you make right decision, sometimes you don't. But then, if you make wrong decision, you lose your money. Then, next couple of months later, you move to other direction. And then, that gets you to the opal. And then you you do excavating with big excavators, 40 tonne, 30 tonne excavators. And then when you find the ties there and opal there, then you use bulldozers to do open cut. Like uh, 150 meters that way, 30 meters that way, 20, 30 meters deep. And then you read the ground and you see how you go and you follow it. Boulder Opal is only can find in Australia. No way anywhere in the world. Any other opal you can find around the world. Only black and boulder you can find in Australia. But with opal you need to be careful. Who you buy opal from, where they come from, because now there's new opal coming from Ethiopia. And I'm, I'm look, I'll be open telling you, don't buy it, because you lose your money. They treat it, with chemicals, and that's not good. No good for your body, and simple as that. That's why our opal is 100 times more expensive than that kind of opal. Uh, Ethiopian opal come from high hills, hills, from vul vulcan, vulcan rocks. That's why, what vulcan mean, they are thirst of the water. Soon as you put them in the water, they lose the color. And li their lifetime is two years. That's it. Our opal, black and boulder, I guarantee 100% lifetime. If anybody thinks he's not, they can give it back to us, we replace it. Or give the money back. And in Australia, o o opal is not much water and that does disappear because they're stable. That's important because Australia, was 100 million years ago, two part. There was one side, another side. Between where we mined Opal, there was the sea. And that's exactly what happened between Hungary and Yugoslavia 100 million years ago. Exactly the same thing happened in, uh, in Australia. And that this sea disappeared, that's what made Opal. Majority of opal you can find in Australia, that's crystal opal. Uh, Copepedi crystal opal. And then 8% you find black and 2% you find boulder. You can see straight away from that percentage was the difference. Uh, you're chasing 2%, that's very hard. You're chasing 8%, that's hard. But you're chasing 85%, that's much easier. You know, that's, that's the difference. You need to look back ironstone too. You must remember this. Ironstone can be black ironstone, can be sand ironstone, ironstone, sand ironstone, and can be mud ironstone. Don't touch mud. They disappear in the water. Then you got nothing. 
best boulder to buy when you look at the back like iron like like iron boulder and brown and that's the good one you got three four sort of black opal there you look black opal you look beautiful color on the front but then when you look that you must look on the back too you remember back is important to judge the quality of the opal if you got black on the back that's good opal if you got gray they can crack you know that's why it's half price of the black one i used to sell a lot of opal all over the world before but because China started developing and I said to myself, let's go to China. Maybe because of my background, uh, everything uh, uh, from my grandfather and all that, a lot of story behind that. And that's how I ended up in China. And I had such a good friend there and uh, we put Opal in the uh, best place in Shanghai you can get. But that was only a loose store. For 12 months, nothing happened. And then he said to me, Milo, people don't know what is it. And of course I know. I walk in the shop there, I asked the girls there, what's this? He said, we got no idea. And then I said to myself, how you can sell it if you got no idea? I said to Mr. Ma, I said, Mr. Ma, we need to change. I put half of my opal in jewelry, designed in China, in Shenzhen, designed by us, all my friends, I ask everybody what I think, and then I pick best from best, and uh, that's how I started. And that, from that day, I never looked backwards. Every opal is different. And I'm the first one who registered opal bread, luxury opal bread, in the world. And that's what I was amazed. Why nobody did it before us? We mine our own opal. And this is the difference. You can get the best price. Another thing, we guarantee for our own opal. Another thing, we establish here in Beijing, in China. To succeed in opal, what we're doing today, you need to be straight from mining, cutting, designing, put in jewelry and put on the market. That's what you need to do. Without that, you can't succeed. But we don't think what's happened next couple of years. We think what's happened next hundred years. Because this is the family business.